All right, let's keep it nice and simple, straight to the point. Genshin Impact is a game that heavily revolves around combat. There is no denying that. Even though it's an open world game with a lot of different things that you can do, combat is an almost necessary and fundamental part of the game. Which means that by extension, the enemies that you fight in Genshin's open world and in Genshin's events and Spiral Abyss are also an absolutely fundamental pillar of the game. And in fact, just as I'm recording this video right now, Hoyoverse just announced the 4.0 livestream for Fontaine, and this will definitely bring on a whole batch of new enemies. So, just as I promised in my previous top 10 best enemy designs in Genshin Impact, let us talk about the top 10 worst enemies that Genshin has released so far in the past three years, and hopefully we never see anything like them in Fontaine. Let us begin. Starting things off at number 10, we have Rodea. And just like many of the enemies that are going to be on this list, Rodea is a very sad boss fight because there is so much wasted potential with her design and with the possibilities that could have been done with her. Look no further than Legend of the Vagabond Sword, where you fight another Oceanid, I believe it could also be Rodea, I'm not sure, but you fight another version of the Oceanid, where you actually interact with the Oceanid itself or herself, and you get to fight the Oceanan while also occasionally killing some summons on the side. And that version of the boss fight is actually really good. Unfortunately, the one we have in game leaves much to be desired because Rodea, the boss fight in game, boils down to a trash mob cleanup inside a very buggy square arena where a salty Rodea will keep pumping out Hydro Mimics for you to fight until you recycle enough of her trash mobs back into fresh water after which her sodium levels drop back into equilibrium, allowing for Rodea to reach her liquid vapor critical point and diffuse out of the arena. To translate what I just said in more legible terms, uh, this fight sucks for many reasons. First of all, you cannot interact with the boss itself, it just sits there and watches you as you fight trash mobs. Number two, the trash mobs she summons are super cringe. Number three, the arena is extremely buggy, and when I say extremely buggy, it really is. Sometimes Rodea is going to hit the platform, it will sink one of them, and then it randomly she will just sink another platform. Sometimes no platforms sink, it happened to me once. And of course, let us not mention the fact that for some reason, Geo Constructs cannot be used on that arena, which means any character like Albedo or Zhongli is rendered pretty much useless in terms of energy generation, because the moment they put their Geo Constructs on the arena, they will instantly break. Overall, this fight is a greatly missed opportunity. The Brodea that we fight in an event, or the Oceanid that we fight in the events, is much better. The fight lacks flow and fluidity, but it is still better than the other 9 we have on the list, otherwise it would not be on number 10. Moving on into 9th place, we have the Rune Hunters. And some of you might actually be surprised that these guys are even on the list, because for the most part, Rune Hunters at first glance appear to be decent, good enemies. And, uh, yeah, that is true, they are pretty good enemies. Until they're not. You see, the main issue with the Rune Hunters is not something that is fundamental to their design, they do not have a fundamental flaw. It is just a very, very, very poorly implemented mechanic, which is them flying and how long they stay up in the air once they actually take flight, and why they take flight. They could take flight for several reasons. The most famous ones are either running away from them, which is actually justifiable because this means you probably have a bow character that can bring them down in the first place, which is why you want to stay away from them to shoot with your bow character. Or they could also take flight for you simply using a plunge attack with a character like Shao and Kazuha, who require plunge attacking as a fundamental part of their kit. And then the Rune Hunters can simply decide that no, you don't get to play your character, and then they stay up in the air for an entire minute shooting at your rockets that do no damage and just essentially wasting time. It's a complete waste of time. If this enemy didn't stay up in the air for that long, or actually didn't take flight for you simply using a plunge attack, it would be a significantly better enemy. In fact, it wouldn't even be on this list. Unfortunately, it does. And now at number 8, I have the Regispines, and these enemies are terrible. So, I'm gonna be blunt. It's very simple. They're not bad because they're hard, they're not bad because they're annoying. These enemies are just poorly designed, they are a terrible concept. So, the Regent's Vines are a stationary enemy. And just to be completely clear, being a stationary enemy in of itself is not a bad thing. You can make many stationary enemies work, and Holyverse has already done it before many times across multiple games. That being said, they are a stationary enemy that is a one gimmick enemy. The only thing you do with the Regis Vines, and so far in the game there are three variations of them, Pyro, Cryo, and Electro, is you locate the weakness, which is usually going to be on the stem, 
you break the weakness, and then you kill the boss almost instantaneously. And that's it. That That's the whole fight. There is nothing more to it. It's a very, very boring enemy. There is not really anything for me to say other than that. And the only thing that they can do which is remotely interesting about this enemy is relocate the weak point into somewhere else that is more difficult to reach, like the stamen or the eye of the plant, and that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, in the future, there is a very high chance we're gonna get more of them, but it is what it is. They are passable. What is not passable, however, is the complete joke of a fight that they give for Dvalin. And Storm Terror is, again, a very sad fight, because just like Rodea, it is completely wasted potential. This could have been one of the best fights in the entire game, not only because of the location, but also because of the idea itself. They tried something genuinely unique by turning it into a completely new 2D platformer style, and unfortunately the implementation is very poor, which means that the fight ends up being just an annoying the ground is lava for newer players, and a completely irrelevant fight for older players with a Devalin that has the HP of your average Sumerian mob. And now we're gonna start diving into the real trash can of Hoyo vs. Design Team. Starting at number 6 with the Golden Wolf Lord. So actually this guy is fine in the open world, where I have a problem with him is when he's in the Spiral Abyss. Because uh, if you didn't know, enemies in the Spiral Abyss, especially bosses, have different AI. And the way this guy is coded by Hoyoverse is unfortunately to turn him into a stall boss. And in a mode that requires you to clear at a certain speed, that is obviously not conducive for a healthy and fun game design. The Golden Wolf Lord exists only to waste your time. And to top it all off, in addition to avoiding the player for most of the fight and doing basically no damage, the Golden Wolf Lord can also turn himself completely immune and send a bunch of constructs that you have to break in order to actually be able to fight him again. Now, I do not have a problem with him requiring Geo to break those constructs. The issue is how much time this boss tries to stall. And at number 5, uh, you're gonna start noticing a pattern over here, we've got the Rune Serpent. So this boss is bad for very simple reasons. Everything I just said about the Golden Wolf Lord, take it and multiply it 5 times. Instead of stalling time by flying up in the air where you can actually hit it with ranged units like Scaramouche and Yoimiya, the Rune Serpent buries underground, which means it's completely untargetable. This is essentially the Golden Wolf Lord Ultra HD. However, even this enemy is nowhere near as bad as the abomination we're gonna talk about next. Because at fourth place, I've got the Setechwenut. And this boss fight is something. Hoyoverse decided, you know what? Players hate the Golden Wolf Lord because it stalls by flying up in the air. Players hate the Rune Serpent because it stalls by going down underground. Let us make a boss fight that is the unholy combination of both. And this thing is basically the worst stalling boss that Genshin Impact has to offer. It flies in the air, wastes your time, it burrows underground, wastes your time, and it basically does no damage. It's a complete joke. It's just a meat shield that you cannot even hit. That's all it does. And the third worst enemy in the entire game is the algorithm of semi-intransient matrix of overseer network. This boss isn't just AI, it feels like it was made by AI. Because this boss in Genshin, it 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 it, it does nothing. Like, actually, what the fuck? I'm not even sure what to say here. It it literally does nothing. The only thing that this boss does is it sits there and watch you hit it. It is this boss actually has a good use in the game because it could actually be the perfect target dummy. It's actually a better target dummy than Masanori is. But as an enemy, this is a joke. This is the amalgamation of the most lazy, the most pathetic game design that you could possibly reach. It is just a tanky target. That is it. And to add insult to injury, it sometimes goes invisible to make it harder to hit. That is all it does. That's it. That's the whole boss fight. I'm not sure why I'm even here. And somehow there are two enemies that are even worse than this. Let's get into them. And the second worst boss fight in Genshin Impact is the everlasting Lord of Arcane Wisdom. Uh, yeah, yes, I'm actually putting it at number two. Oh my god, no way! He's insulting my baby boy Scaramouche! Yes, I'm actually... You know what? Actually, never mind. 
I'm gonna get this out of the way very quickly. If you're someone that unironically calls Skarmouche your baby boy, or not not even just Skarmouche, if you call any fictional character your baby boy or your baby girl or your king or your queen unironically, just leave a dislike and get the fuck out. Don't even comment. Because I, even interacting with you would objectively make me less of a human being. Now let's get into the actual boss fight. So, the everlasting Lord of Arcane Wisdom, or Skarmouche, the boss fight, the god boss fight, it's one of the most amazing, one of the best visual spectacles that I have ever seen in video games. It is a cinematic masterpiece. It looks so good, but that is the problem. This is not a boss fight. It's a freaking cutscene. That's the whole thing. It's not a fight. You can run around for eight minutes and let that green Akasha thing hit the boss until it gets knocked down and then you can kill it. That's it! You don't even fight, you run around the arena, you collect the infinity stones and then you blast it and when it's knocked down you go and one-shot it. I'm not sure how to even... There is nothing redeeming about this boss. Nothing whatsoever. And that is very sad because you have this titan, this absolute behemoth. It looks so good! And it fights, it has such good animations, the amount of wasted opportunity is insane! Unfortunately, it's just a running around boss fight where... It, it's not even a boss fight, it's just a running around cutscene where you collect a bunch of uh, crystallized reskins in order to blast the boss, have it fall down, and then you kill it. It's, it's so sad how much potential was wasted with this boss, because again, look at how amazing the fight itself looks. Imagine if this was upgraded and then transformed into a real fight where you actually fight this titan, this god, this behemoth of a monster. Would have been absolutely amazing. But it is what it is. Again, in terms of, in terms of animations, this is very good. And it saddens me that it is actually this bad when you think about it objectively. It really does. Because, really, the fight begins over here. This is where the fight begins. You break these things, you collect even more crystallized reskins to break it, and then pretty much the fight ends. And Skaramouche has been one of the most iconic characters in Genshin Impact so far. He is a very, very good character. Obviously, the boss fight doesn't speak to the character itself. The character itself is actually a good character. It, both playable and in terms of story, he is a pretty good character. But, uh, yeah, it's sad. The oh, by the way, guys, guys, guys! Watch out, watch out! The fight is about to begin! The fight is about to begin! Holy shit, guys! After seven minutes of a cutscene! Oh my god! Oh my god! This is insane! Whoa! Guys, guys! Holy shit, this is... Okay, this is the, the, this is the most amount of fun I've ever had in my life. This is it, this is it, this is peak, this is peak video games! That was such an insane fight! GGFF15! By the way, there is still one enemy that is even worse than this. Let's get into the biggest dog shit that Genshin Impact has. Number one are the Whopper Flowers. And oh my god, is this enemy unbelievably garbage. It is by far the worst enemy in Genshin Impact by a long shot. Throughout my life before playing this game, I would have never imagined that one of my most hated mobs in any video game would turn out to be Burger King's Beyond Meat Whopper Burger. This enemy is so troll, it is so annoying, that this is legit how I think the real person who made it in real life looks like. This enemy is an excellent example of complete and utter garbage game design. It takes everything that players hate and puts it in one enemy. It is a moderately tanky enemy, meaning it has more HP than your average trash mob, meaning it doesn't die quickly. It has heavy knockback on its attacks, meaning it can knock you around easily. It has virtually no knockback resistance, meaning that if you sneeze on it, or if you look at it the wrong way, it gets knocked all the way from the center of the spiral abyss to Kuala Lumpur, and now you have to run around chasing it, wasting your stamina. And then, on top of all of that, it has a random dash that it can randomly use to dodge your attacks and teleport to the other side of the arena. And sometimes, it dashes to the other side of the arena, and then it activates its elemental armor. And when it does that, it stun locks itself until it activates a boosted attack. And that means, if two of them do it at the same time, one of them is gonna end on one end, and the other is gonna end on the other end. And I have to run across the entire arena in order to group them. 
Now listen, I understand that there are ways to actually group this enemy. Yes, you can specifically move around the Spiral Abyss to group them. That doesn't mean it's going to always be consistent because these enemies themselves are super inconsistent. Okay, from here onwards, I spend another 10 minutes ranting about what makes the Whopper Flowers so bad, but I think you guys get the gist of it. I'm not gonna subject you to all of that. So, I'm gonna end the video here. However, this has been my top 10 worst enemies in the game, and obviously it's a follow-up to my top 10 best designed enemies in Genshin Impact. So, yeah, this is pretty much it. Fontaine is coming soon. It will bring a lot of new mechanics and a lot of new enemies. I'm super excited for that. But for now, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Take care. See ya.